Welcome back to the shop. Today I will be doing one of the last mods on one of my Ender 3s uh, to make the machine a little bit more repeatable and a little bit more production ready. I will also walk you guys through on some of the mods that I have already performed on these machines and how they're working. I have set up a small ecosystem in, this in, in my little workshop here that um, allows me to monitor my prints, it allows me to start and stop, it allows me to keep a library of uh, objects that I print regularly. Before I modify this machine any further I want to show you the actual modifications I've performed. And one of them is this duct. I will put a link in the description. This is not my own design but it's a bit of a silencer. It quiets down the power supply a slight amount. The other thing that I've done is I've installed a strip of LEDs underneath. Uh, that allows me to actually see my prints and help me level the bed because these are actually placed on a shelf. As you notice there's no a bracket on top to hold a spool. Or I should say there's no spool holder. That's actually mounted to the shelf itself. Uh, the machine doesn't have it. Um, so what I did over here was I took, so I will disassemble this, the stock printer power supply is bolted together with an XT60 connector, just like that. And the XT60 connector, and this is a 24 volt power supply, is, um, is a fairly common connector. So what I did was I took some fairly heavy gauge wires here underneath and created a parallel male and female Watch it careful do not change the polarity and then broke out the 24 volts in, into two separate wires one wire goes up here and you might be able to see it there is a self-adhesive strip of LEDs I will put links in the description for all this stuff if you guys want it. The other thing that I put onto this uh, splitter was a uh, male end of a small plug. I had a couple of these laying around. It was enough to get this job done. They're not necessary but having it modular is a nice thing. And the reason for that plug is I will show you shortly. The reason for that is I milled a hole onto the front bracket of this machine and installed an hour meter just like uh, my deltas have and this one is about 60 hours in. This is my second machine. My primary machine has about 100 hours of uh, print time. I also installed a little fan protector over here again I'll put a link in the description it's not my design but it's a nice design and it, it fits very well made a little face plate why not and one of the other designs that I truly like was this um, small protector box for the back of the LCD while I had this apart I might as well you know install something that protects the LCD and it's vented Again, I will put a link in the description. You guys can uh, check that out. One of the things to make this machine as reliable as possible is the factory extruder is not... It's not very good, to say the least. The actual arm over here of the actual extruder tends to develop cracks. Mine developed cracks after only a couple hours of print time and basically it wasn't squeezing the filament against the hob um, gear over here and it, was, it wasn't it was pushing filament. The printer was under extruding severely because of it and I was not very happy. I bought this uh, little aluminum extruder. It's a direct replacement for the old one it's made out of aluminum so less chance of it breaking. Um, not that the plastic one would have broken if it was made beefy enough. There are people out there that run 
uh, 3D printed extruders for many thousands of hours. I did myself for many thousands of hours. I may end up redesigning an extruder that actually is a belt drive uh, conversion for this. So it'll, it'll allow me to increase the torque um, output of this machine. So one of the things that I do want to install now, and I just 3D printed the part, and this is an original part. I've, it's a very small piece. It's got a couple of holes in the back that I've chamfered already, and there's a hole in the front. And what is this for? You may ask. Well, this is for a quarter twenty threaded insert, and this will get pressed into this. Uh, piece and this piece will uh, get bolted to the top of the fan cage here. I will drill a couple of holes and chamfer them of course and use a couple of wood screws to fasten this thing over here and the reason for that is it gives me a place to mount a dial indicator and the reason for the dial indicator is so I can actually level the bed this is a thousands it's not a tenths dial indicator the bed is not these beds are not very good uh, to use a tenths indicator but even a thousands indicator like this this is, this happens to be a one inch travel you don't need that much but it's what I have and um, I think it's a, it's a pretty decent compromise on what I need. And what this allows me to do is once I put, set the printer down, I usually set the printer on foam pads, and I, try, I do a level. To level the bed, what I do is I take the printer, I warm it up, 65 on the bed, 215 on the hot end, so everything is actually um, at an equilibri equilibrium and what I do is I disable the motors and I bring the head down basically I home it then I disable the motors I take the head in and then I tune with the knob the distance using a feeler gauge uh, I use a 0.01 millimeter feeler gauge so it's just about four thousandths of an inch um, feeler gauge there and once I get that right I push the head over with the dial indicator I take a obviously I take a measurement here and then I push it over I tune that knob until the measurement matches and the measurement really doesn't matter it's you know having consistency I mean it does matter because if you just squish it down then it's not gonna do much but then I start doing a four point leveling and I just go back and forth a few times about three or four times usually does this and I've, d I've already done this to my other ender tree and that gives me a pretty consistent adhesion pretty consistent results otherwise these these machines are very prone to warping for some reason uh, much more so than my delta machines even printing small parts like this sometimes they'll warp a corner and it's just the leveling on these is not being that it's a four point leveling system it's it, 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 it ideally it should be a three point leveling system but it's not so you can introduce twist and warp onto these beds if you go buck wild with these knobs. Eventually what I'd like to do is actually machine some spacers and use some rubber to bring the bed down to just about the right height and lock it in. But once that time comes, I don't know when that time will come, but for now the dial indicator trick will have to do. So let's do this mod. Nice thing about the Ender 3 is you get all the tools to disassemble the machine or assemble it.
printers are connected to a Raspberry Pi running a Repetier server. Repetier server is powerful enough to run all four printers at the same time without any performance degradation as well as serve a nice little UI here for me to control this small farm that I have here. This is one of three systems that are present in this environment. The second system that I have present in this environment are these WISE cameras and they're fully independent from everything here. The reason why they're independent is because of a safety call it a safety interlock. If Repetier server doesn't work, one of the printers goes nuts. I can still view what is going on here without having any dependency on the Repetier server. The third system that is running in this environment right now is I'm running smart plugs on each one of these printers. I can control the smart plugs via um, application or I can even control them via voice command. Alexa, turn on printer 3. Like so. I can do the same thing with printer 1 and 2. I've named them like that because it's just simple. So I wanted to discuss uh, the reason why the setup is built in the way it is and what the thought process was. Um, there's three separate systems there that are fully independent of each other. Two of those systems can actually stop the printer. The actual smart plug is fully independent of the 3D printer. I could have integrated that with uh, plugins, uh, hardware hacks, so on and so forth, simple relay, and then had a single point of control. The problem with that is in the past I've had certain problems with. Um, Raspberry Pis, just about every kind of computer system out there has had a crash at one point or another. And when you're relying on one thing to do everything, you end up choking yourself. So Repetier server is only doing that. It's just a server. It's considered almost like a print server, but it has capabilities of doing um, um, library organization, you can actually create a library. If you buy the Pro version, it actually gives you uh, 3D rendering of the STLs that you have in there, which is actually kind of nice. And I'm contemplating on actually buying the Pro version because I use it a lot. Um, so that by itself is doing what it's supposed to do. The cameras are again fully independent. I can integrate them with a Repetier server and incidentally that is a paid function. To have a webcam. The problem is at that point I would increase the CPU usage on a Raspberry Pi. It's only a Raspberry Pi 3 um, running four streams at the same time. That's probably not something that I want to do at, that, at this point because it could introduce a problem spot nor do I want to upgrade the hardware. So that stays separate. And the other nice thing about that is I can go someplace some other place in the house and keep keep an eye on my prints make sure that things are not going awry if the printer stop for whatever reason it's either it's done or there's something wrong and that that by itself is actually a rather uh, nice thing to have so with all three of these systems working independently of each other that'll that gives me a little bit of a nicer layer of um, safety. So with that said, I hope you guys uh, like this video. Share and subscribe. And the products I've used are all in the description. They're affiliate links. Throws a, a buck in the, ta in the hat if you're buying them anyway. If you're not, no hard feelings. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you guys that is watching this, and uh, thank you. Bye.